Hello Year 7, this video is to help you with your home learning for the particles topic, uh, answering the big question, where will a shark eat you first? In the UK where the water is colder or in Australia where the water is warmer? And for this practical, we are assuming that there are the same um, distribution of sharks in both places. We know there's probably more sharks in Australia, um, but we're assuming the same distribution for the purpose of this experiment. Really what we're looking at in this experiment is diffusion. And I'm going to show you how to set up the experiment. I'm not gonna gain any results, but I'm gonna show you how to um, gain your results for yourself. And we're starting with a transparent bowl or an ice cream tub. I'm actually going to use a lunch box and we have some equipment in the um, prep room at school so if you don't have one of those items you can get some help from there so if you really don't have anything that you can use um, then please go there and get some equipment we're going to use cold water room temperature water hot water you could measure the temperature of your water with a thermometer if you don't have a thermometer you can just literally list them as cold room temperature hot maybe even do some water that's been in the fridge um, to get an even colder um, sea of water uh, you're going to place your squared paper that you will be given at school underneath the bowl um, and then you're going to add a single drop of food to food dye to your bowl and leave it for a fixed period of time. I'm going to suggest leaving that for 30 seconds. You can time that on your watch um, or on your phone uh, or just use a, a second hand on a clock. Then you're going to count the number of squares covered by food dye and then divide it by four because the paper we're using each square is a um, a quarter of a centimeter okay so we divide it by four and that will get our area covered in centimeters squared controlled variables to make it a fair test we're always going to use the same volume of water we can measure that with a jug or we can put a ruler into the water when we've poured it out and always get it to the same depth we're going to use the same color food dye from experience we found that different food dyes spread at different rates uh, they diffuse at different rates so uh, it could be um, a, a factor if you use one color food dye and then a different color food dye and we're always going to leave the experiment for the same amount of time and i've said that that's going to be 30 seconds so let's have a look at our experiment so here's the squared paper that you will be given at school as you can see, each one centimetre square is, has been divided into four squares, so it can give us a better reading for our results. We've got our bowl of water here, and I've just taken cold water from the tap. Like I say, we can use a measuring cylinder or a measuring jug, it's probably what you've got at home, um, to pour that water in, or I can dip a ruler into the water and check that it's always at the same depth. The only other thing that you might need to get yourselves is some food dye. And the food dye is going to act as the blood. We need to drop a single drop of food dye into that water and then start the timer. I'm using a spatula, but you at home could use something like a teaspoon. And I've just lightly coated just by dunking it into the food dye. And I just want to have one drop come off of this so like that and i've started my stop clock so that will now spread in the water which we call diffusion and after 30 seconds i'm looking on the clock on my wall i will stop that and look at the area covered Thirty seconds has passed and I've got to look at the area that that food dye has spread out to and you can see there's kind of the main drop of the red food dye and then it has actually spread a little bit further on it. Here's where I've got to do some careful counting. I think it's actually um, spread quite far so I've got to do some careful counting of the squares to see which squares have been covered by that food dye. Okay, so I'm gonna do that now.
I think about 20 squares have been covered. Okay, when you look really closely, you can see it has actually spread around this area just here. So I think 20 squares have been covered. And if I divide 20 by four, that makes five centimeters squared uh, as the area of blood. So if we go back to this sheet, we can see temperature of water. Here I'm going to write cold tap water and then I can write five centimetres squared area of blood in the water just there. And then I can try the, exactly the same method for different temperatures of water and see if there is any difference in how quickly that blood, that food dye, spreads through the water. And if it spreads further in one temperature of water, then that's going to indicate to us where we will be eaten first by a shark, because if the blood spreads further, the shark will be able to detect us. Hope you've understood that and that you have a lot of fun doing your practical at home for this week um, and that you're enjoying the practicals. Okay, Bring that data back to school and we will talk through um, what it all means and what the science is behind it in school. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks.